Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dialing In, and yes, you read that correctly. Today I am dialing in the guitar input pad on our Line 6 Helix, on our Pod Go, and also actually on our HX Stomp, although it's just your guitar input set to either instrument or line, but same sort of idea if you read in the manual. So you might be wondering, oh, what are you talking about dialing this in? This is ridiculous. It's either on or it's off, and, and there is some truth to that. But I think it's important to go into a little bit more detail about what's going on. And the reason I say this, and some folks may kind of think I'm crazy for doing a video about this, because it's such a simple thing, but I get a lot of questions about this. I also get a lot of questions about why don't my presets sound the same as when I hear somebody else play them in a video, let's say. I have presets up on Custom Tone, I have presets on Marketplace, and the odd time I get somebody say, you know, it doesn't sound quite sound exactly like what you're doing. Now, there are a bunch of variables involved in this, right? One thing is just the player. I'm going to play through a rig, it's going to sound one way. You're going to play through a rig, it's gonna sound a different way. Um, you know, put any player on the exact same rig, and it's going to sound like that player. So that's one thing, but I mean, things should be in the same ballpark. Obviously the guitar we're using, different pickups have different output levels. Well, that's what this video is kind of going to be more about because one thing anybody who's played tube amps before knows is that depending on the input we send into it and how hard we hit the front end of that amplifier, we're going to get different characteristics of that amplifier Namely, how much overdrive and distortion we get out, how much maybe a clean tone breaks up. Is it on the edge of breakup or is it actually overdriving now? Or is there just no breakup whatsoever? And a lot of times that can be very dependent on the guitar we're playing. It can also be dependent on how hard we're hitting the strings. It can also be dependent on how we have our volume set on our guitar. So the guitar input pad is actually very similar and works in a similar way to those things that I just described. The output of the pickups, how hard we're hitting the strings, basically how much input is hitting the front of the amp and then deciding how that amp is going to behave. Okay, so what does a guitar input pad do? Well, essentially what it does, the signal going into the amplifier or into the helix is going to be a lower level. So if you read in the manual, the line six folks say, you know, if you have a guitar with active pickups or if you have a guitar with very loud pickups or high output pickups, you may want to put this on. And if you'll notice, they'll, they do say you may want to, but I, I believe if, I, if I'm not mistaken, they even say just use your ears because it's really going to be up to us. But here's the problem with it. If I dial in a preset and put it up on custom tone and I have my guitar input pad turned off and then somebody uses that preset, let's say with the same guitar that I used or a very, very similar guitar that I used and they have their guitar input pad on, there's going to be a slight drop in volume but also in the distortion characteristics and the breakup. It's going to sound a lot cleaner. You're not gonna get the same amount of distortion. So let's illustrate that. I've set up this little preset and I've set up a few snapshots, off, minus five dB and minus 10 dB. Now we'll get to that in a second, but for now I have my guitar input pad off. I have a very simple little preset I pulled up with the matchstick channel two and a dab of reverb so it's not so dry. And that sounds like this. So a little bit of overdrive, a little bit of distortion. Now, let me play a little lick here and then I'll turn the guitar input pad on and you can hear the difference when we engage it. Okay, so I'm not saying which one is better or worse. You can hear when the guitar input pad is on though, we lose some of the sustain, we lose some of the overdrive. That's really all it did. Now, do I need it turned on with this guitar? No, this guitar has kind of medium output pickups. I don't need to have it on. I probably could have accomplished the same thing by just rolling my overdrive back. Here it is with the guitar input pad on. <laughs> Here it is with the input pad off. What if I just roll my drive control back? Mm -hmm. 
I have a feeling, I'm not really comparing them side by side, but it's a very similar effect. I'm just kind of bringing the overall overdrive level of the amp on because I'm not hitting the front end as much. So a similar thing we could do is if you notice, I have two gain blocks set up, one before and one after. So on the snapshot two minus five, I'm attenuating the signal going into the amp by five dB. And what I do at the other side is I boost it by 1.3 dB just to kind of lift it back up to the roughly the same volume. And then on the minus 10 dB, I attenuate the signal going into the amp by minus 10 dB and I boost it up by 2.2 dB just to kind of keep the, the relative volumes the same. So what I did this for is to kind of mimic what the guitar input pad is doing. So I have the guitar input pad off. Here it is, just the sound going into the amp. <laughs> Now, if I attenuate the front by 5 dB, you can really hear when I, when I drop it by 10 dB going into the front of the amp, almost like I stepped on some sort of overdrive pedal when I turned that attenuation off. Now, if we go back to it with it off, I can also accomplish something very similar just by rolling my guitar volume back. Depending on the electronics in your guitar, you can lose a little bit of high end by doing that as well. So it may not be the exact same comparison, but it gives you the idea that all we're really doing is sending less signal into the front of the amp and it's going to basically subdue the amount of distortion. So it's something to really keep in mind, much in the same way as if I play this with different guitars. <laughs> You'll notice my black Vigier Excalibur had a certain sound. The red one has a DiMarzio Tone Zone pickup, which is a much higher output than the Duncan Trembucker that's in the black version of that guitar. So it drove that amp into overdrive a little bit more. Then when I went to the Strat, obviously different output on the single coil pickups, it's going to treat it differently as well. So the whole point of this being that the guitar input pad is a very important feature. Uh, it's very simple, it's either on or off, and there's really no correct answer. I've heard a lot of people online, I've been involved in discussions with folks where they say, if I keep it on all the time, everything just sounds better to me. Okay, then there's your answer, you should keep it on. My question would be is maybe you're just dialing your presets in with a little bit too much gain and then when you turn that off it brings it back to a place where it sounds better to you and you could have accomplished the same thing by just bringing your gain down. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. It's quite possible. Or maybe it is actually doing something that somebody picks up in their ear and they go, no, I really like it with it off and that is perfectly fine. 
But it's just important to be aware of what is actually happening. And if you're a type of person who keeps it on all the time and you're downloading presets from other folks, it is going to sound different than they had intended. Now, there is the other side of it. If they dialed it in with medium output pickups and you're playing that preset with super high output pickups, then that's gonna make it sound different as well. You're probably gonna get more overdrive and distortion. And then when you turn the input pad on, it'll bring it back down to where it needs to be. So just food for thought, really. There is no right and wrong, but I hope that that kind of clears up some of the questions I get quite often, actually, of just people asking me, do you play with your guitar input pad on and off? I just had somebody post a question the other day in the forum and tag me in it and ask, do you dial your presets in with the guitar input pad on or off? And I thought that is an excellent, excellent question because it will really affect the end result of what a person is hearing when they're playing through somebody else's preset. Whether it be something they got off Marketplace, custom someone purchased from a different site, it's going to affect it dramatically. So I thought this video was an important one to make just so people kind of, just to, to raise awareness about how important a factor that can be in having things sound maybe the way we want. But again, no right or wrong. Try it on, try it off. Set up your own little, you know, snapshotable uh, guitar input pad by using the game blocks like I did in this if that works for you as well so that depending on the guitar you're, you're, you're playing with. If you have a super high, one super high output pickup guitar, maybe you have that game block before the amp just to kind of subdue that a little bit and have it uh, hit the amp in the way that you want or in a very similar way to your other guitars. Or maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want that high output because you want to grab that guitar when you need that extra little kick. So anyways, I hope that was enjoyable and I hope that clears up some of the confusion and some of the questions that I get a lot. Um, I, I really hope it does and I hope it's helpful and helps you get closer to getting that tone that you want and having things sound the way that you want. Please like this video, share it with anybody who you think would get use out of it or enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back really soon with some more. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Ciao for now.